It is time for us to get started. Happy Thursday, guys. Oh my God. Feels like um gosh, it's been a long week. <laughs> it's been a long, busy week. I hope you guys are busy. The the market is picking up, right? Um, so I hope everyone is busy and they're seeing some improvement um, in their numbers. There's essentially a 50% increase in um, business since last month, right? Um, that's pretty much the statistic across all industries. So I hope you guys are seeing that. Um, if you're not seeing that, keep keep up with the fundamentals, keep up with the fundamentals, um, and you will definitely, you'll, you'll see it. The market is coming back and see, there you go. Adrian said, yeah, there you go. Um, uh oh, I asked somebody to unmute. Did I ask them? Was that I did that by mistake to you, Ayana? Yeah. Um, yeah, we're seeing, we're seeing, and if Adrian is your first huddle, oh my god, you're always this is the fun one. She's always in class, <laughs> she literally is always in class. Um, but this is this is the fun. Adrian, it's your first. Yes, you do always text me too. So we have an Adriana and an Adrian. That's our first. You guys welcome them to their huddle. And, and definitely Adrian's been part of the community for forever since the beginning. And she always messages me. She's like, wait a minute, how do I get on? So she's too busy. But in any event, <laughs> let's get going with our huddle this morning. Um, just gonna do a quick share screen or this afternoon, actually. Um, let's see here. Oh, I'm so out of sorts. I got to do presentation mode. I'm so out of sorts. I'm not in my, not in my office, guys. My, uh, my, my laptop finally said, listen, I'm done with you. You keep trying to turn me on. <laughs> so, yeah. I'm in the other office this morning. So there we go. There we are. There we are. Yeah, welcome, 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 welcome. Okay, you guys can see my screen. Give me a thumbs up in the chat, please. If you can see my screen. How's everybody feeling? Everybody okay? Everyone okay? Yeah? Doing great. Feeling great, awesome. That's what I wanna hear. That's what I wanna hear. All right, well, welcome to your huddle. Let's get into today's conversation, our discussion this morning on lead. Um, we, 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 need to, we need to talk about how you guys are going to get after your most qualified leads, right? Your most qualified leads so that you can have a, a profitable, um, and I almost said the word peaceful, right? What we do is not, everything is not going to go away as far as it relates to the, the work that we have to do, but you can certainly choose your clientele. Um, you can be specific about who you like to work with. So we're going to have a quick conversation today about that. Um, making sure that your funnel is full of leads, right? For those who I have not had an opportunity to meet before, you guys know me. Rico Jackson, <laughs> I'm the founder and co-managing partner of Modern Mortgage Experts, Title Experts, Transaction Experts, our transaction coordination uh, firm, and Experts University, your, your online coaching um, and business training developments, portal system group, you name it, whatever you want it to be for you um, is what we are. And one of the things I always remind the, the group is, let me move this over. One of the things I always want to remind you guys is to take advantage, take advantage of the resources that are available in the community. Um, do not struggle with anything alone. I got a message today about putting together an offer, structuring an offer. Let's do it. I get it. Sometimes you might be a, bit, a little bit concerned. Hey, Darren, you might be a little concerned about, um, hey, Kayla, you might be um, a little concerned or a little rusty <laughs> about a deal type. Feel free to reach out and say, hey, I just had a couple questions about how to put this deal together. Or you're overwhelmed, you're getting ready to go out of, go, go, you know, travel. And you're like, you know, I generally don't use a TC, but I know we have a TC available in the community. Who's that TC? Can I get her on my file? That's Jennifer, right? For sure. And then of course, you're getting ready to work with, hey, Kataya, Katia, Katia, Katia. I always pronounce your name 10,000 different ways, <laughs> right? Um, Congratulations on your on your closing. Uh, what was that? Two weeks ago? Yeah, 
a week ago. Well, you did one last week and two weeks ago. You're welcome. Um, guys, feel free to reach out. Don't, don't, you're, a lot of us are solo agents, but you don't have to do this thing alone. Um, again, you guys know that our group is powered by Title Experts. When you get ready to close, we are here. Our contact information is there on the screen. The TC contact information, where'd it go? Oh my gosh, we're missing a contact information for transaction experts and model. But in any event, um, if you guys need it, you know where to find it. Listen, for those of you who participated last month in our first First virtual home buyer workshop. Again, I want to continue to congratulate you guys. Uh, we're doing it again. You guys know that we're doing it again on Saturday, March 25th. Had an amazing turnout. Had an amazing turnout, uh, as well as some great results from that workshop. And so we're definitely doing it again on Saturday, March 25th. Again, it's from 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. Um, this is just a small just a, a small fraction of the results from that workshop. Happy shopping to Dr. Carlisa Smith. One of her buyers that attended that workshop has been pre-approved and they are out shopping. Um, congratulations and happy shopping to Nick Jackson. Um, one of his buyers attended that workshop and they are out shopping. Guys, listen, we're not doing this just for the information. I've been doing home buyer workshops with realtors for, mm, I would say about, COVID was two years, so that's part of that. Um, I would say, gosh, about five years now. I've been doing home buyer workshops with realtors for at least five years, okay? What we have put together, guys, is the best practices for an effective home buyer workshop. I'm telling you. I've been doing it for five years with various different realtors. And this, what, what most realtors, they struggle with is the promotion of it, right? Putting it on, finding the venue. And if you decide to do it virtually, if you've not done Zoom before, then you're concerned about the tech. This part, the home buyer workshop, you guys, is marketing. Let's have a conversation about the home buyer workshop. The home buyer workshop, for the most part, is marketing. It is prospecting. The work, the success of your efforts in getting your people on the home buyer workshop happens really either going to be before and definitely after. So in lieu of spending hours putting together a in-person home buyer workshop or even a virtual home buyer workshop, the idea of co-hosting these virtual home buyer workshops with your community is that you can put your time, effort, and energy into the most productive portion of the home buyer consultation process. And that's the consultation after the fact, I promise you, right? So what ended up happening is when we first started doing home buyer workshops, it would be like, great, everybody would come, they would get the information and there would be no execution, right? So I said, hey, listen, there needs to be some execution on these home buyer workshops. There needs to be credit applications taken. There needs to be buyer consultation scheduled thereafter. There needs to be movement. There needs to be, okay, what type of homes are they looking for? How soon are they looking to move? And so this home buyer workshop is refined to get you guys to the most germane information that you need so that after they get off this call, they get on a buyer consultation with you. They provide what they need to provide for a pre-approval and you guys go shopping, right? Build your funnel. I want you guys to look at this as an opportunity. This, this, this piece of it is an opportunity to build your funnel. Just build your lead funnel. Build your lead funnel. Now, to be most effective, you do need to follow up with the people thereafter, but at least gain some, some people to talk to, right? And so that's what this is for. And so for those of you who have not signed up, you can go to um, the Express University website, scroll down to the bottom and sign up there, or you can use the QR code. For those of you who participated last month, you know that some of the items that you receive is the social media marketing um, assets. You receive a calendar with some proposed captions, those of you, you might be wordsmith. You don't need the captions. That's fine. <laughs> Put your own captions. Um, but if you need help with that, there will be there's caption pr provided on the um, the spreadsheet. I do suggest that you add your contact information in there, personalize it a little bit, right? But then you also have the graphics. You have the graphics. I want you guys to look at your um, your social media as your very own channel right, with your commercials running, 
when someone comes to your social media, your social media site. And social media can be a challenge as far as keeping up with it. We did a, a training last Friday, which was well attended. And we're going to get that on the calendar more often on how to schedule social media posts. Um, we got a lot of good questions out of that and really just saw that there is a need for some support around the social media marketing. So we're going to put some more of that in place. I want you guys to look at your social media marketing as, again, a constant commercial, a constant commercial. At this point, what's going to put you, what's going to put you, have you stand apart from others is the information that you provide. How many of you follow social media pages just because of the information that they provide? Raise your hand in the chat. If it's a page about how to do reels, if it's um, a page on cooking, um, if it's a page about um, decorating, DIY, but you follow that page because it gives you information. Nobody gets any information from social media. Okay, there you go. She's raising her hand. Yeah. You, so you want your people to see you as an information source. If they see you as an information source, they're going to continue to come to you first, right? And so that's some of the information that you're putting out on your social media. Um, again, this is some of the assets also for this month. Eventually, with this being the second month, you guys probably have at least some what, at least 30 different. <laughs> and Darren, why are you laughing? That's the picture you sent. <laughs> um, <laughs> with the um between last month and this month, you have 30 posts at least that honestly people won't even know. Once you get to about, once you get to about, mm, I would say a hundred posts. Start all over again, rinse and repeat. <laughs> and now you have content. Now, the, uh, the last thing I'll say with regards to your social media is make sure that you inject some of your personal stuff, you know? This will definitely get you there. This is for the purpose of promoting your, your workshop, but inject some of your some of your personal, um, doesn't have to necessarily be your personal life, but some of your person. So they get to know you as well, right? So that's a little blurb on social media. Um, the last thing I want to say about that. Oh, I see a, uh, a misspell right there. The last thing I want to say about that, about the uh, the marketing. That is so funny. A big misspell word right there. As soon as I looked at it. <laughs> um, the last thing I want to say about your marketing is when you guys keep in mind that when you're marketing, you it needs to be continuous. And this is why with us co-hosting these workshops, the person will say, oh, Darren always does a home buyer workshop on his, every month, right? Every Saturday, right? Carmen, Jackie, she does a home buyer workshop every month. And so people get to know you as being able to consistently come to you, regularly come to you for a home buyer workshop. That was one of the other things that made one of my realtors very successful. We did it every month at the same time. And so when that home buyer workshop ended, we would say, see you next month, same place, same time, invite a friend and tell someone we'll be here. And so that workshop started to grow. And so with this consistency, you're not like, oh, I'm going to do a workshop this month and then try and market, market, market for it. And you don't get the you don't get the same you don't get the turnout. Right. Because it, it hasn't been marketed consistently and you're not hosting it regularly. Um, Adrian, this one is virtual. This one is virtual. This one is virtual. And again, that's strategic. People will log on from anywhere um, for a virtual workshop. Yeah, that's that's really what it's come to. And it's more efficient for you. You guys don't have to figure out. You don't have to figure out uh, food. <laughs> you don't have to figure out venue. You don't have to do anything because also the way the, the workshop is set up, it's a webinar. So the only the only parties that are on camera are the presenters. It doesn't even have to be you. Right. You're not one of those people. So you don't even have to dress up. <laughs> so we want we want to make this as easy as possible for you all to build your 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 buyer uh, pipeline. Right. I mean, are you you're inviting them to a webinar that's going to give them the information and then point them back to you. So that's that. Um, I'm just excited because I've seen people with their successes. Uh, identifying lead sources like a headhunter, not identifying, identifying um, lead sources like a headhunter. Identifying lead sources like a headhunter. 
Everyone heard of a headhunter before? A headhunter is looking for a particular person. A headhunter's their job all day is to find the particular person to match. Generally, it's for a job. They call them headhunters, right? So they'll look for people. Um, they'll get a job posting from a client. The client says, I need this person, this type of person, these this skills, this experience located here with this salary. And the headhunter goes after finding a person that matches those um those those specifics that the client is asking for right those that are most successful they make the most money for you guys i want you to get into that mindset you know that 50 percent. i tell you guys all the time and, and and i feel like one of the this is one of the pillars of our of our coaching and our training is to get you guys in the mindset of always Definitely be closing, but to get to closing, you got to have contacts. You got to have leads. So always be marketing. How am I always getting in front of people? Jessica posted on social media, who's got my money? Who's got my next check? I tell you guys, when you get up in the morning, who do I need to be in front of? Because they have my next closing. They have my next client. They have my next contract. They have my next closing, which leads to my next check. When you guys get up in the morning, 50% of your time is focused on who do I need to be in front of? Okay. Who do I need to be in front of? Now, today's discussion should get you to the point where you have a defined um set of people that you need to be in front of and so tomorrow when you wake up or the day after because it may take you a little bit of time to figure this piece out right jay but from once you figure out who you need to be in front of once you figure out who's got my money that's the quick answer that's the quick that's the way we put it who's got my money who's got my money is cold for who do i need to be in front of once we get that defined today from now into perpetuity until that dries up stay there right because your ability to identify and nurture a profitable lead source will affect the success of your business you got to always have leads coming in sellers i say this all the time say well, well i'm mostly sellers well sellers want buyers and buyers want sellers so you just want your name out there because you never know what buyer is going to refer you to a seller. You just want people to know that you're in this space. They need to talk to you when they're looking to buy and or sell. OK, your business is going it, it's, it's going to live. It lives and dies based on who knows you and who knows what you do and who's willing to work with you. It's based on who's you getting in front of who's got your money. So today is a note taker day. There's not a lot of necessarily lecture. It's prompts for you to think and take action. So the first prompt, for those of you who've been in the business for a little while, you've done some closing, where have your best leads come from? I want you to think about that. Where have your best leads come from? Where, if you've taken notes to today, where have my best leads come from? Sphere of influence, okay. Where have my best leads come from? Referrals. Refer social media, exactly. S this is great. Yes. RSP. Okay. Sphere of influence. Referrals and social property boosts. Okay. Wherever your best leads have come from, stay there and go deep. Go deep. What does that mean? If you're, okay, Angela says her best her best leads have come from social media. Angela, if your best leads have come from social media, what I mean by go deep is you need reels. You need to be posted regularly. You need a click the link in the bio. You need a DM strategy. You need, um, you need to go live, right? You need to live on social media. If that is where your leads have come from if your leads have come from sphere of influence you need to live in your text messages you need to live in your telephone right you need to live in sending um cards what is we call it the note cards to your to your sphere 
You need to live there. Yeah, social media in your sphere. They need to constantly, 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 and regularly hear from you. The people that, where you get your best leads, they got to hear from you. They got to hear from you every day. And maybe not the same person, but a subset of that group needs to hear from you every day. Because again, look at this funnel, guys. Remember the funnel. There's going to be a lot that go in. You want many to go in, but for all types of circumstances and situations, everyone's not going to necessarily come out right away as a check. There you go. Have a great relationship with your lender. 50% comes from her lender. Lenders are definitely a great referral source. And they're a tremendous referral source. Anyone that is really consumer facing is a great opportunity. So that's what Angela's saying. We're going to hit that in, in a slide. Anyone that is consumer facing, lenders come in contact with people that want to buy houses. They're not sell, they're not going to go out and show the houses, so they need to refer that to you. Right? So even for us, in our in our last workshop, we had about 10 people that did not have a realtor. Did not have a realtor. Guess where they're going? They're going to the community. Once we figure out where you guys, your 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 target areas, where you like to work, who do you like to work with, they're coming to you guys because we don't we're not showing property, right? We had at least ten people that had no realtor. I post on my social media. You guys know I get people that sign up. They're coming to you guys because I don't show. I just I I have enough. <laughs> I do a lot. I'm not showing property, right? So wherever your best leads are, stay there and go deep. So step one in identifying lead sources like a headhunter is to one, identify in, in, in identifying your lead source, who is your ideal customer? Central Broward. Thank you. <laughs> Kayla, like, put me on for Central Broward. That's what I'm talking about. Raise your hand and say something. <laughs> um, who is your ideal customer? Who is your ideal customer? So when I started out, uh, when I started out um, with the real estate law firm, who who's my ideal customer as a real as a as a real with the real estate law firm? People that touch and concern real estate. So let's go a bit further. Who's who most touches and concerns real estate? Lenders, realtors, transaction coordinators. This is this you have to go to who is who has your ideal customer, right? Miami Liberty City, Miami Guards. Okay, got you, got you. I know, I know, <laughs> I know you got Central Florida for me, um, but I probably have a lead coming your way actually. Uh, where is your ideal customer? And now LA, Jessica is licensed in, in California as well, you guys. So if you have a, a referral for, for LA, that, that she's your girl. Um, where is your ideal customer? Where is your ideal customer? Gail is in Boca. Where is your ideal customer? Ayana, uh, make a note of, of, of our locations. He said Dubai. Darren, I saw your <laughs> social media. You're in Dubai. Uh, make a note of, because we needed this anyway. So let's go ahead and get this list started. Carmen in Chicago and okay. Davey. Davey. Andrew's in Palm Beach. Okay, perfect. We need all this. We need this information because we need to know who to refer who to um, as we get. The, I think on this one, we have at least five that don't have a realtor. So definitely put your information in chat. Um. Lead source examples. Anyone adopted a school or a classroom? Adopt a school or a classroom. Your your son's your your son your daughter. I say your son. I have a son. I have boys. Your son or your daughter's class. Just adopt them. Sometimes it doesn't even some some may have um, official processes to get through that, but. I assure you, if you just start with a classroom, all of a sudden, the whole school is looking. Someone will say, well, what about this class? And what about that class? And adopting a classroom is something as easy as maybe you send pizza um, or maybe you send the teacher pencils each quarter, right? 
adopting a school, many schools have where you can put the banner up. Guys, you don't want to just put the banner up. You want contact. You want contact. You want contact with your with your with your ideal customer. You don't want passive. Remember, we talk about marketing versus pros versus prospecting, actually being in contact with the person. Yeah, adopt a classroom. Adopt a classroom. And then eventually you'll have the school. I promise you. How about adopting a business? What business services your ideal client? Adopt that business. How do you adopt that business? Uh, send them coffee and donuts once a quarter, right? What, what do they need? Or, or how do you spotlight that business? Uh, maybe that business is in your, your farm area. The area, you guys mentioned all these areas, Palm Beach, Plantation, uh, du Port St. Lucie, Dubai. I don't know how you get over to Dubai, but Sunny Isles, Aventura, North Miami. Adopt one of those businesses. Now, again, a business that is seeing your clientele. So maybe it's like a, uh, maybe it's a, ooh, doo -doo -doo -doo. maybe it's like a convenience store or something. Where are people dropping in? And it's, and it's ideally probably going to be like a mom and pop store. It's probably not going to be, you know, a major retailer, but you can try it. But you adopt the business that is seeing your clientele. And now all of a sudden, you know, here, here's a, a, a lead source, a local coffee shop. Oh, my God, that is huge. A local coffee shop. A local coffee shop. I'm so excited about that one. That is perfect. <laughs> The local coffee shop, oh my God, they are definitely going to get, that's going to be a good source for seller leads too, for sure. Sellers and buyers in a local coffee shop. Um, and use a little corner as your meeting space. Oh, okay, Jessica. If y'all didn't know, Jessica has a degree in marketing. So this is why you see all this stuff coming off, <laughs> coming off the top of her head like this. Um, yes, well, that was Jessica's idea, Kayla, the local coffee shop. Um and meet and do your work or whatever in that coffee shop. Darius says he has a few barber shops. Thank you for guys, the barber shop. That's a great idea. Beauty salon. Hold on now. What about daycares? Daycare, daycares. Daycares are probably easier to get into even than a school because those are usually private. Great idea. Um, a clinic. And I just thought about this as, as we were having this conversation. The clinic can be an animal clinic, like a vet for the animal lovers, but it can also be a medical clinic, right? Because, oh, restaurants, for sure, for sure, for sure. Um, clinics are good. And this is how I came with the clinic. You want to reverse engineer your outcome. So what do I mean by reverse engineer your outcome? I'm thinking about just as an example, when a loan program comes out, guys, who best fits that loan program? You guys know about Florida Hometown Heroes, right? You guys know that that makes home ownership affordable for frontline community workers, such as law enforcement officers, firefighters, educators, healthcare professionals, child care employees, active military or veterans. Where are they? Where are they? You guys have heard about it. You, you think um, because you hear about it so often that everybody must know. And if they knew, if they knew, if they know about it and they and they want to do it, then they'll call me. No, 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 no. That's not how it works. Because <laughs> they really probably don't understand it. Number one, they probably didn't even hear about it. Number two, they probably really don't understand it. Right. And number three, they're just not they're busy. They're just not going to take the initiative to contact you to find out more about it. Um, you guys hear me use the term marketing money. You need to be marketing money because right now everyone's being told they cannot afford to purchase. They're they're not they're saying the interest rates are too high. And this, but that's not true, right? I just closed a, a, a lady. She was sixties in her sixties. She mentioned um, she was renting. Remember, I always tell you guys there are people that they must move or still their best move, notwithstanding interest rates and all those stuff. It's either a must move right now or still their best move. So she was renting in a community 
um, in a condominium community, the condominium um, OOC, there you go. She was renting in a condominium community and the community, a, a condo came available literally like three doors down, like three doors down. What do you think she did? She got a 6.5% interest rate, but how often do condos come available in that community? Not often. That was her best move. That was her best move because we know that she can refinance just shortly to, to a lower interest rate, but that unit probably won't be available. And oh my God, not a couple doors down where you can just move your stuff like literally, right? So these are the types of things that pe people are still closing. They're still closing. And so again, Hometown Heroes is just one of those examples. It's just closed Hometown Heroes. They had to bring 0 0.01 only to closing table outside of a $3,500 earned money deposit. Hello, somebody. You guys check the chat. Is that one cent? Or zero? Wow. 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 Crazy. Buyer brought a penny to closing. A penny. Outside of that $3,500 earnest money deposit. If you don't make that a social media post um, immediately, Miss Kayo, if you don't make that a social media post, a, a reel, a post, a story, an email, a text message, if you don't make that a story immediately, okay, all right, need my creation, <laughs> guys, you see, my mind thinks marketing, like, let's go, let's go, and so this is, guys, this is why, this is what you got to do in your business. That's why we're having this conversation. 50% of what you're going to have to know how to do is how to market and build your funnel. Everybody's not going to be ready for whatever reason, but you want them in your cipher. You want them in your, your, your world to say when they are ready, they're going to come to you or the people that they know already, they're going to refer them to you. Marketing, 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 marketing. All right. Uh, seller leads. We're not just one buyers, right? Seller leads. For sale by owners, you guys know that. For sale by owners. Um, expires. Foreclosures. People that are in foreclosure, are you checking the foreclosure calendar? For those of you who say, well, I want to focus on this. Thing. Are you checking the foreclosure docket? Right? Uh, probate is another. Somebody probably selling in a probate situation. Probate and divorce. The docket is going to be private. I know, Adrian, I know you killed the, 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 the foreclosure and probate. The docket is going to be private, um, private meaning you can't just pull up the um, you can't just pull up the records if you just go on a public search. So you would need access to the docket or you can get access to an attorney. And there's a list, right? If you want to go that route. That, but again, just keep in mind that that is generally in a divorce, someone's selling. Generally in the probate, someone is selling. Definitely in the foreclosure, someone's selling. They're in a for sale situation. <laughs> so it's an opportunity for you to get ahead of it. Most of them have some equity, right? Or maybe they might have a short sale opportunity, but at the end of the day, that is a sale. Lastly, seller leads. What about townhome communities? Why did I say townhome communities? Why should you market townhome communities? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. High turnover in town home communities. High turnover in town home communities. Yes. High turnover in town home communities. High turnover. Condos, high turnover. Those are high turnover communities because you have rentals and then you have exactly. 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 So that's that's a that's a fertile ground for seller leads and buyer leads. But again, reverse engineering, I would still do it in the the the, the farm area that I want to work. Right. So again, going back to the cities that you guys have have thrown out there, I would go back to uh townhomes, condo communities in those cities. Um, and market those, right? So once you've identified the 
the the uh, the source. You want to identify. Oh, definitely sponsor an attorney. Yes, yes. You want to identify an engagement strategy. Engagement strategy, and that is how will you gather the contacts and nurture them for conversion. The engagement strategy. This is the second part of marketing. Number one is really is mostly two parts. One is getting the lead. The next is nurturing the lead for a contract. So I want you guys to always think when you're marketing, how am I capturing the information of the people who I've gotten their eyeballs? Where, where are they signing up? Where are they sending me their information so that they're not going into my CRM or I'm calling them? or they're getting an email or a text message, they're going to my social media, right? Don't just go out. I want you guys, when you, when you put out marketing information, when you put out the information, how are you capturing back in their contact information so that they can be nurtured for conversion, right? So number one, who, who am I, who am I searching for? Where, where are they? How am I going to make sure that I get their information once I've engaged them? Like a headhunter, sniper, sniper style guys, like, okay? Get all the information so that you can build. I want you guys to think about, don't think deal to deal to deal. Think about I need a funnel. I need I need I need a database. I need a database of people to market to. That's where the marketing conversation goes to. All right. Woo! All right. So we're in, in just a reminder. Mark the calendars. Saturday, March 25th. Build your database. This is so passive. I can't even. If you don't take advantage of this, I don't know. You want to, you must want to work. <laughs> build your database, build your funnel. Again, once these people come into your, once they come into your, 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 um, when they sign up, you get their contact information. You get their contact information, drop them in your CRM. And all you've had to do is post. You don't have to come up with the marketing material. You don't have to do the presentation. All you have to do is post. They come back to you, and then from there, you do what you would have done anyway, which is get them on a buyer consultation, All right? Guys, in closing, in closing, in closing, in closing, in closing, as it relates to this marketing thing and doing business in this space, I don't care how crowded the market appears. I don't care how crowded the market appears. We're in a room now with 35 other realtors. That's pretty, that's a little crowded, right? <laughs> Many of you are in the same regions. That might appear a little crowded to you. But even in the exercise we did today, everyone threw out different areas, different locations. Darren went as far as Dubai. So if you look a little bit closer, you will see no matter how crowded the market appears, there's room for you. There's a client that's only going to work with you, that they're fit for you and you're fit for them. So I want you to never, don't neglect to put your name out there. Because again, in a room full of, of, of other realtors, in a market that appears to be crowded because everyone's hire me, hire me, just close, just close, just close, just close. There's still room for you. Someone's going to connect to Pat. Someone's going to connect to Adrian, Jessica, Carmen, right? Andrew, Angela, Audrey, Charlene, Donna, Gail, George, Henry, right? Jackie, Someone, someone's going to connect to just you. So get out there, put your name out there every day every day, seven days a week, because there's something called automation. Every day, I want your, your thought process to be, who's got my money? Get your marketing out there, build your funnel, go lead prospecting like a headhunter, okay? And we'll see you at the closing table. All right, guys. 
That's our huddle for the day. <laughs> Thank you. I know, right? You close tomorrow. <laughs> Jessica close tomorrow. Yes, Lord. <laughs> You're welcome. Good to see you guys. Good to see you guys. Thank you guys so much for all the headhunter mindset. I like that. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Headhunter mindset. <laughs> Go get them. Go get them. You're welcome. Good to see you, Adrian. Love you, Kayla. New hashtag alert. <laughs> you guys are crazy. All right, RW. Um, what's the best way to approach a business asking to sponsor them? That's a good question, Audrey. So you would let them know what your what you can do for them. It's always what we call reciprocity. What can you do for them? And what do you need? So for you, you can say, well, I have, say for example, you have social media, or you have X number of people in your email. Um, you would say, I'll promote your business. In in return, I would love for you to um to promote my business. You're welcome, Yolanda. Yeah, I meant to say Caprice, Amelia, Yolanda, Marissa, Shelly. You guys definitely have again this month, you guys have your um your registrants coming in. So build a funnel, build a funnel. Um but come up with that. What is the what's the benefit to the business for allowing you to sponsor them? And of course, always what's what's their greatest need? Most of them, their greatest need is is marketing, right? They want prospecting. And so you also want to have a way for them to know that you sent business back to them. Right. So maybe it's a coupon. Maybe you do um, you know, a dollar off. I don't know. But always think of again, remember. What's their need? What is the bit when you when you go into the business? What is their need? And then how are you going to track the fact that you have brought value to that business? You're welcome, Sandy. So just think about that. Think about that strategy. And again, everybody wants promo for their business. Right? All right, guys. Any other questions? Any other questions? Feel free to Thank drop in the chat or come off me. Thank you so much. Have a good weekend. You too, Caprice. Good to see you as always. Have a good one. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs> All right, guys. Later. You say you're real late. <laughs> you made it though. You got perfect attendance. You might have a couple late, but perfect attendance so far. Appreciate you. It shows. <laughs> it shows. All right, guys. I'll see you guys on Tuesday for most of you. And, and also next Thursday.